In today's video, I'm going to show you what I believe are the best 100 watt monocrystalline solar panels for the money. The two panels you see here are very good quality, have rigid aluminum frames with mounting holes as well as grounding holes, a hail resistant tempered glass surface, IP65, water resistant diode boxes as well as MC4 connectors and it has a 25 year power output warranty. Both of these panels I picked up on Amazon for the ridiculous price of only $167 shipped. These panels have very high buyer satisfaction ratings. Now I wanted a 200 watt folding solar panel but after looking online and seeing how ridiculously priced they were I decided to make my own. To make it folding like you see here Everything cost me just under 200 bucks. Let me show you everything I did, so in case you want to make one of these, you'll know exactly what to do. I'll also be taking the panel outside to perform a few power output tests. Now to make this into a folding panel was very simple. I went to Home Depot, picked up two of these 3 inch nickel plated exterior hinges, and I bolted it onto the frame using stainless bolts, washers, and nuts. In a minute I'll flip this around so you can have a closer look at that. Let me show you how it closes very easily. Flip it around like this. Very simple. Goes together very nicely. And I decided to wire my panels not in parallel to increase current, but in series to increase voltage to charge my portable sine wave power supply units. The output open circuit voltage for each one of these panels is right around 19 volts or a little under. You have four across the top, eight down, 32 solar cells, and the voltage of each one of these cells is just under 0.6 volts. I prefer a monocrystalline panel because they have very high power output and they also have excellent power output under lower light conditions, unlike polycrystalline panels. To keep the panel from banging, you can see there's a rubber bumper on each corner. As it closes, it'll make contact right here and it will maintain a uniform space between the two panels. On the end, there's a screw eye, and on the other end, on that panel, is a latch that goes into the screw eye to keep it together nice and tight. And right here, very simple, and lock it back. Okay, let me turn the panel around to show you what I did on the rear side. Okay, on the back you can see the MC4 connectors have been removed on this panel, the hole's been silicone filled and they're connected in series. I wanted higher voltage, same level of current. The cable here is a 14-2 marine grade wire. Inside this box, I'll show you in a minute, are just bypass diodes. And inside here are bypass diodes as well as a very low forward voltage blocking diode leading to the MC4 connectors. Now this power station that I have, the sine wave inverter that you see right over here, has a built-in MPPT charge controller, but I also want to use this panel to charge up lead acid batteries, maybe lithium chemistry batteries, so that's why the blocking diode is installed. Let me open the box to show you the inside. This is the positive going out to the white wire, and you can see the black wire going to the negative side. In this image here, you can see how the hinge was bolted to the frame. The diode box cover where the MC4 connectors are located you can see up close, right over here on the right, there's a diode, this is the blocking diode, and you have your two bypass diodes, and the series connection is made inside this box between the two panels. The very bottom here is covered with marine 5200 sealant. Six inches from each end of the panel, top and bottom, you're going to have mounting holes on both sides. Right in the center, you're going to see there and there are holes for ground screws, as well as here. Now the folding panel could be used two different ways. In the summer I could lay it flat on the ground because the sun will be almost directly overhead. Or by adding an aluminum angle along the top edge, I can make the top edge extremely rigid and have an adjustment in the center to get the panel at any angle that I desire. So let me show you what I did. You're going to see this four bolts. It's got a knurled edge on it so I could use it by hand or I can use a hex key and that's going to secure an aluminum angle. Right here is a look at that aluminum angle. You can see the holes are drilled. These bolts will slide directly through. There's four of them and you can tighten it by hand or using the Allen wrench. Once it's in position, this entire top edge of the two panels 
will be extremely rigid. And I'll have a pivot point right over here in the middle. Let me give you a close up on this. What it is is a cable crimp connector. You insert two cables inside and you squash it down and you have a loop on the end. I'm going to have a pin that goes through there to allow the panels to pivot. Let me connect this up and show you how it works. Okay, you can see the aluminum angle is now bolted to the top of both panels. Both panels are now held perfectly straight. I can go all the way down and not have to worry about the ends of the panel sagging as it's supported from the center. In order to have this adjust to any angle, I found this Mr. Clean mop handle. I cut it to what I needed, added the rubber stopper, and you can see it goes on very easily. Put it like this, and you're going to insert the pin all the way through. Simple as that. Then you have full adjustment over the angle of the panel. Let me take this outside and show you how well it works. Okay, we're going to be doing multiple tests for power output. I'm going to take the panel on the left, open the diode box, and we're going to do a test just on one panel first, and then we're going to take a look at both panels together. I popped open the cover on the diode box, and I tapped directly into the positive and negative from the panel. There will not be any blocking diode in series with the power meter. To ensure the current can be handled, I use two wires on each side. Okay, to test the output of one panel, I connected up a power meter, and it's on the terminals of a halogen lamp, the high beam terminals. Let me get close and show you what the readings are. All right, as you can see, we're at 82.4 watts, 12.38 volts. This would be much higher if the sun was not being partially blocked by a thin layer of haze. The other day I tested this, and it was all the way up to 100, and it was showing 7.06 amps in this corner. So you can see 6.55, 11 point A is fluctuating with the clouds and the haze. It's gonna go back up right now. That'll go over 12 again, there you go, there's 82. But the panel does perform as stated. You don't have to worry about this panel not performing. Okay, you're looking at both panels connected in series. That's the voltage output, 37.28. It would be just a little higher than that if the blocking diode was removed. ready to eat. You want to eat? Okay, come on. Come on. Wow. Need a little bit of water with that. <laughs> I don't believe it's eating that whole thing, Newton. Here he is digesting his Fig Newton. <laughs> you want to eat? Oh my god. You eat too much. I now have the Max Oak portable sine wave generator connected to the solar panel. The full voltage of around 38 volts going into this input right here, and you can see 172 watts. That reading would be a little higher if I didn't have a little bit of haze in front of the sun right now. Now what I'd like to do is show you a folding solar panel that has a wattage output that is grossly overstated. This one claims to have a 170 to 180 watt output. We're going to test it. Okay, here's the panel unfolded. You have six different panels appears to be very well made, but can it put out 170 to 180 watts? Let's do a test. All right, right around 20.9 open circuit voltage. Let's connect up the bulb and see what kind of wattage. All right, the halogen lamp is now connected. Let's take a look at the reading on the power meter. As you saw with the other panel, it didn't have any problem supplying at least 12 volts to that halogen lamp. This one cannot do it, 7.75 volts, 39.7 watts, 5.13 amps. 
this panel is nowhere near that 170 to 180 watt reading. More than likely, under the right conditions, this panel could put out a maximum of around 45 to 50 watts. It's really a shame that there's so many companies online that lie about panel specifications. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.